Welcome to this full flight tutorial for the Fly-by-Wire A32NX for MSFS. This tutorial is from a runway start with engines on. Let's head over to the world map and plan our flight. The Fly-by-Wire A32NX accepts world map flight plans, so you can plan your flight in the simulator and it will automatically feed through to the airplane and ATC. Let's now start our setup on the flight deck, head down to the FMC. We're going to clear out the message that's in the scratch pad, which is GPS primary. Heading over to the flight plan page, we can see that the flight plan we inserted into the world map has fed through to the airplane. Heading over to the initialize page, we do need to enter a cost index, we'll say 100 here, and our cruising altitude, so that's flight level 260 or 26,000 feet. On the next page, double click the soft key next to zero fuel weight, and that fills in our fuel predictions. Heading over to the perf page, we'll enter a value of flaps 1, which are the flaps for the set by default we're going to use for takeoff, and clicking the soft keys next to the V speeds will populate those speeds. We'll also enter a nominal flex temp of 40, so we can use flex mode on takeoff. Looking at the takeoff checklist, the only thing that remains from a runway start is just to test the takeoff config. On the autopilot panel, I'm just going to increase the ND range before setting up the autopilot itself. So speed and heading should already be in managed mode. Altitude is already in managed mode, but we need to dial in our cruising altitude here before takeoff. And we're ready to go park and brake off, and we're going to move the throttle to the flex detent as shown here. And you'll also see flex appear on the PFD here. As we reach our rotate speed, we'll pull back on the stick, and then once we're sure we have positive rate of climb, we can bring the landing gear up, and I'll activate the autopilot. Shortly after your climb out, you'll see lever climb flashing on the PFD. At this point, move the throttle to the climb detent as shown here. And the PFD will now display throttle climb enunciator, which is correct for this phase of flight. As the airplane accelerates, you see the speed starting to reach the red speed tape. You can retract the flaps. The airplane will now follow your flight plan and climb to its cruising altitude. Once the airplane reaches its cruising altitude, it will level off and you'll see an altitude cruise enunciator appear on the PFD. Now we're at cruise, we can do some preparation for descent and approach. So first, put the auto brake to medium and I'm going to dial in an altitude that is 2000 feet above our airport elevation. The airplane will remain at our current altitude until it's time to activate descent later on. If we look at the perf page on the FMC, we'll need to enter some weather data for our destination. We can find this weather data on the EFB over here, so just click once to turn the EFB on. And on the main page, enter the airport code of our destination and the airport weather data will be displayed. We'll now enter the data that we found on the EFB into the FMC perf page here. Q and H was 1011, the wind was 8 knots at 260, the temperature was 13 degrees, transition altitude in the UK is 5000 feet, in the US it's 18,000, so we'll enter that here. We're going to also set a decision height of 150 feet above ground level, where we'll decide whether to land or go around. Heading over to the nav radio page, we can see that our destination ILS has been pre-tuned from the world map. Top of descent is indicated by a white down arrow on the navigation display. Once the airplane crosses that point, you see TD reached displayed on the PFD. At that point, head up to the autopilot panel and we're going to push in the altitude dial that will then begin a managed descent. You can see here descent and throttle idle displayed on the PFD. A quick side note here, I did have an issue during descent where the airplane lost its flight plan and it was replaced by a dashed line. The way I fixed that was just going direct to the next waypoint and the flight plan sorted itself out again and I could place the airplane back in its managed descent mode. So back on plan, 
As the airplane starts to make its final couple of turns towards the airport, activate LS which displays the destination ILS on the PFD and also hit approach to activate approach mode you see localizer and glide slope armed. The airplane should start to decelerate around this time so increment the flaps as the airspeed passes through the orange flap markers on the PFD speed tape until you're at approach speed and full flaps. At that point drop the landing gear. As the airplane turns onto final the localizer annunciator should appear. On final we'll also address the landing checklist all that should need doing is checking the cabin which is on the overhead panel just double click the forward call button and that sorts out the landing checklist. On final the airplane should reach its bottom of descent and level off you'll see an altitude annunciator. Shortly after this you can expect to pass through the glide slope and when the airplane passes through the glide slope the glide slope annunciator appears and the airplane starts to descend. Once you're on the glide slope if you want to auto land just activate autopilot 2. If the airplane is ready to auto land a land annunciator will appear on the PFD just before touchdown when you hear the retard call out idle the throttle the airplane will flare touch down and roll out it will also break to a stop because we set the auto brake earlier and that concludes our tutorial flight thank you for watching i hope you found this useful if you did please drop a like feel free to subscribe for regular sim content take care and i'll see you next time Thank you.